Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I'm JT. We have a friend on the show now who I met at University of Utah, skateboarding to the same class. And uh, his name is Julian Carr. You guys probably all know him because he jumps massive cliffs with his skis on. He also is an entrepreneur. He started Discreet Clothing Company and the Cirque Series. Um, so we'll let Julian tell you about those things, but uh, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. Stoked to be here. This is great. Yeah. And uh, by the way, thank you for uh, birthday present. Today's my birthday. I'm 38 years old. Julian uh, handed me my first gift, um, Cirque Series hat. Booyah. Birthday boy, JT. <laughs> Yeah, man, happy birthday. So it's been, a, it's been a heck of a ride for you. You uh, began with kind of recognizing that, that Utah has some of the deepest snow on earth, aside from, of course, Squaw Valley, <laughs> but um, that you can land in this stuff off unbelievable heights. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's pretty wild. It's, uh, it's one of those things, ever since I was a little kid, you know, uh, I was constantly in gymnastics facilities, so I was always around a foam pit. And so hardly ever was I actually learning how to do proper uh, front rolls or somersaults or flips or round offs. I was always playing in the foam pit. And then as soon as I figured out a ski in eighth grade, once I figured out powder, I was like, oh, okay, the mountains are just a giant foam pit. So that's kind of been my uh, mentality and the way I view cruising around in the mountains. So you're, you grew up in uh, the Avenues, right, down in Salt Lake City? Yep, born and raised, Salt Lake guy. But you say you didn't go skiing until eighth grade, and now you're a professional skier? Yeah, I just uh, took a roundabout way to get there. Uh -huh. But uh, as soon as I started skiing, it just kind of one of those things that clicked for me. So the, within two or three days, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be doing this for my whole life. And what is it? Is it the airtime? Is it the, is it the uh, speed? Is it the sightseeing? What is it about skiing that, that hooked you? Oh, uh, I think it's just being outside in nature, you know? I think it's one of the funnest sports. Take away the cliff jumping. Just skiing is so much fun. You're traveling at speeds that beat most activities that use an engine, and you're just standing there. And you're taking yourself around in the mountains that just seem photos of these areas are beautiful. And they're usually with really good friends. So to do the cool sport and the coolest places with the best people, it's a pretty fulfilling activity. And then you throw in cliffs and it's like pretty satisfying lifestyle. Hey, believe it or not, I agree with you. I like skiing <laughs> as well. But the um, snow is deeper in Utah though. Squaw Valley might be second. Well, that's another <laughs> discussion. Um, the uh, off season activity that seems to have uh, kind of taken over your snowless month is uh, is this trail running stuff. Yeah, it's, you know, as you know, we're constantly boot packing straight up pretty mm -hmm. cool peaks and um, that's the mentality in the summer. Uh, get to the peak and don't, don't necessarily run around. I'm not really a runner, mm -hmm. so I don't like run on some single track for 10 miles, look at my watch the whole time and then when I'm done, I'm done. Mm -hmm. Although people that do, that's fine. I'm just geared to go to the top. And I got really addicted to hiking Mount Olympus um, down in Salt Lake Valley because I lived right by the trailhead. I got this amazing dog, so I started hiking Olympus for the dog because I couldn't really mountain bike with her. Mm -hmm. And after hiking Olympus over and over and over again, um, I thought I was fast. But as I learned in the mountain running world, there's just absolute freaks, you know. So I'm very average. But yeah. I was like, oh, I want to do some contests. You know, I think I'm fast. So I looked into the trail run contest scene and all these mountain races are like 100 milers, 50K, and have like 30,000 elevation gain. And I'm like, holy cow, like where's just a race to the top of Olympus back down? Like five miles with 4,000 feet. You know, something that would take you two or three hours and that's it, not 24 hours. And so uh, I was shocked to see that there were, were pretty much no races like that. Uh, the shortest ones I could find were like 14, 15 miles that had five or 6,000 vert. And to me, that's still like a bit more than mm -hmm. me and especially a lot of other people want to do. So that's where we found um, the sweet spot by I created the Cirque Series. And all our races um, are on, on average about eight miles with 3,000 vert. We hit an iconic summit and come back down. And I usually just make the path a cool loop mm -hmm. so you have a new experience for the whole race. You hit an awesome summit. You're with, you know, we raced the, uh, we capped the races at 500. We just sold out our first race that's next weekend at Brighton at 500 people. So it's not this giant race with thousands of people, but 500 people, it's still like the appropriate mountain party, you know? So mm -hmm. we have a great vendor village. 
I'm used to the ski world where ski contests you get done and it's pretty fun afterwards. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to bring that element to the mountain running scene. And here's a few clips of kind of the vibe. Looks like fun to me, man. Yeah, I got to get you out for one. Yeah, that seems much more reasonable because if I, you know, I do my jaunts up in the hills and they're about that, 3,000 vert and, yeah. you know, a few hours. Yeah, you can maybe stash your, your yeah, parachute and I could, wave yeah. at people on the way down. That would be, uh, that would be a, a, <laughs> an acceptable form of cheating. Yes, but it's, it's really fun. Uh, it just utilizes everything I got uh, at capacity, you know, to like market it and run it and be the race director and then obviously enjoy the races and run the races as well. It's a really fun off-season activity that keeps me in shape and keeps me in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And how's Discrete doing? I mean, what are we, 15 years into know, that? Right? It's been a while. Uh, it's good, man. We're uh, doing, you know, mostly direct sales from our website and we, Zoomies carries our stuff. We're about four years in with them. Um, and it's great. We're in, and we're, besides our own inline product, uh, which we, I think we make the best headwear, so great beanies, great neck uh, kind of face masks, um, but we make private label stuff is going off. So we're making branded goods for coffee houses, brew pubs, and down the line. So that part of our business, which was unexpected, is just taken off. So it's about uh, on par with our inline products. So speaking of which, what, what kind of keeps you fueled? Are you an uh, are you energy drink guy, coffee guy? What's, the, what's getting you to the top of these mountains? <laughs> I think, uh, I mean, I love my coffee in my morning. And I think uh, what fuels me is just balance in your life, right? Just try to have something going on that keeps you, keeps you in nature somehow. Keeps you rooted, keeps you humble, keeps you just... Uh, with that kind of cool, innocent perspective of just taking it all in and uh, trying to find your, your place in, in life and then come back down out of the mountains and navigate the crazy world where I'll deal with. Yep, fresh air, man, I tell yeah. you what. I, if I'm going up a hill that, and there's a certain level of monotony to it so I can just kind of zone out, all the answers I need come to me in, in life. It's For like, sure. It's just, it's weird. If you're, if you're overly focused and your activity you know, requires all of your attention, you don't get that. Um, and yeah, that's why that's why I like to go uphill. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yep. And it's it's primal, you know, get it to is. a high spot, and it's a very subtle sense of accomplishment. But uh, I think that's why it's so satisfying. And you've never won one of your own races. Oh, not even close. I'm not a winner either. <laughs> and, <right? laughs> I'm like always just a few <laughs> notches down. Oh, it's brutal, man. These um, guys take off. And usually our courses, you can like be halfway up on a cirque and you can see yeah. two miles up where the peak is, silhouette of the winners that are yeah. already hitting the peak when I'm like halfway up. And I'm, it's uh, half inspired and half like really soul crushing <laughs> soul crushing yeah. that's why that's why you put on these contests have your soul crushed yeah. Yeah. probably by people like uh Jax mariash wonder woman Jax is actually yeah. next on our show yeah she's done a bunch of our races i think has placed quite well in them too she's a she's a monster yeah total class act so you you know I, I can relate to your program because we wear a lot of hats you know we're professional skiers we have um various off snow endeavors that make money and some that are just passion rooted. Where where does it stack up for you? Are you uh, is it fifty percent discreet? So, uh -oh. yes. Gentlemen, but yes. uh, hey. we, were, we were gonna do this later, but <laughs> since you guys are such good friends, we figured we'd just do this right now. Look at that. Happy, Look at that. Happy yeah. birthday, my man. Happy birthday <laughs> to <laughs> me. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. me. All right. Yeah. I'm thirty-eight. Whew. And I guess those last two, that's because there's two more till 40. So here we go. Ready? Yeah, there you Ready? go. Nice. Wow. Too easy. Thank you. <laughs> um, but what is it? I mean, is it, are you 80% you pro athlete and you're just on the day to day? And I know, I know yeah. when you're a pro athlete, you got to be 100% in, but tell me. What I is think it? it's just uh, compartmentalizing. Um, and, you know, in the, in the wintertime, and even now, like I'm lining up a trip in September to uh, Las Lineas and mm. putting together a production schedule for my skiing side of things. And uh, I take a lot of pride in uh, being a good professional. So mm -hmm. I try to um, make sure I'm doing a great job storytelling on my skis. And I love it. 
But I think as long as I love skiing and I love being a professional, uh, I think I'll have the strong visibility and mm -hmm. the the kind of you know mentality well, it takes to, to pull it off. But once the the gears shift and it uh, gets into the off season, you know, it's it's uh, same thing with the businesses. And while the ski season's going on, I'm still you know doing a lot of steering ships for the businesses and during the ski season. Very respectable. The good thing is your running is just your perfect off season training. Oh, it's I mean, great. When you get in your ski boots, you're already prepped to just run up a 3,000 footer. That's uh, that's pretty good. Now, you recently, I mean, your skiing career is really kind of on fire. You've had, uh, you picked up a couple new sponsors recently, and uh, it was uh, something about the powder awards that went what went your way. And yeah, I, I just cool. kind of been seeing this influx of uh, radness yeah, in your thanks. career. Well, I remember a few years back, I was at a pow I think my first powder awards. And I think you were like up there. You got number two or three or something. I Always just two was, or three. Yeah, right. <laughs> that one. I thought that was so cool. And I was like, man, that'd be really neat to be on that powder list someday. And I was totally shocked. But last year I got number three. And I was pretty neat to, as, as you know, just cool to be part of uh, the community. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, just trying to plug away, man. I've been like seven Warren Millers, I think now. Yep. And uh, just trying to do stuff that keeps you relevant, you know, and like I said, I still love it, and it keeps me really fueled up to, to kick butt in the professional sense and just have fun. And as if you didn't have enough uh, going on, you're also giving back to our uh, global snow community through uh, Protect Our Winners. Our friend Jeremy is an uh, absolute badass, rad yeah. guy that, yeah. um, you know, finds the time to do all this stuff. Tell me about Tell me about protecting our winners. Uh, you know, I just think that it's a topic that is one of the biggest issues facing humanity. Um, you know, we all know that smoking cigarettes is bad for you. And regardless if you believe in climate change or not and all that, uh, it's not really a bipartisan issue. It's the same analogy as smoking's bad for you. With carbon-based fuel, the earth is smoking cigarettes. So just how we know we shouldn't smoke them, the earth is a living organism, let's get the earth off of cigarettes. It's the best option. And there mm -hmm. are viable alternatives. So I just committed myself to learning about the topic so I can contribute. And that's what's awesome about POW. It's a great resource, it's a great educational platform. And it equips me to engage in conversation with people um, and contribute when possible. But really just a student and trying to be educated on what I think is one of the biggest topics and POW is amazing. So I've been fortunate enough to get really involved with that and, and I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Cool. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy Jones, man, he always yeah. blows me away. Yeah, I just, just watching him snowboard is a, it's a thing, of, thing of beauty. Yeah, it is. And I respect both of you guys' um, style on and off the snow. Well, thanks, man. Likewise. Is there anything more we need to touch on about uh, before I think we people probably need off? to know that I skateboarded my whole life, mm -hmm. and so I can, you know, bomb down hills pretty dang fast. As and, I can vouch for. Yeah, when I met JT, he'd only been on a skateboard for a couple months, and I had this route through the University of Utah that's really fast and pretty technical, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna dust JT, Mr. Pro Skier Dude, and I just was on the fastest part, going as fast as I've ever been, and I could just feel that he was right behind me, and you were, and I was like, okay. All right, I, I know what this guy's made of. He was right on me. He's been skateboarding for two months. That took all my skateboarding intellect to go that fast and that technical, and you were right behind me. I, I like, remember it well. Respect, the, respect. The thing about, the thing about <laughs> my, my approach to life is that your, your natural surroundings or urban surroundings, whatever they might be, there's always the right toy. Sure. Um, and if you have the right toys, you can have the maximum amount of fun. And I started going to the University of Utah, and I was walking downhill on... <laughs> Uh, about a you know eight degree slope, and I'm just thinking I could get to class so much faster if I had a skateboard. And you know, living in in Tahoe, you know, we have like gravel and dust. There's not a lot of uh, wonderful skateboarding outside of the park. Sure. But transportation wise, it's you know there's too much snow on the streets. And yeah. You're not really, it's not really the spot to yeah. go from point A to point B. Sure. So I get into skateboarding simply for point A to point B efficiency. Yeah. And then you kind of stepped that whole game up because yeah. he was like this guy knows right where the cracks are <laughs> yeah. and, and all that stuff um what about great big cliff jumps 
Any, anything coming up? Uh, well, this last year, I skied some of the deepest snow I've ever been treated to at Targi. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and fellow cliff guide these days, Owen Leeper, mm -hmm. and we teed off for like five days. Um, this one was at Irwin, Colorado last year. And it's fun, man. Oh, I just that's a keep, big one. Yeah, that was a fun one. Nice I think, floaty. Yeah, it was great. A lot of speed. I tried to get out versus yeah. just down. Um, right. But it seems like each year I, I'm lucky enough to put myself in a situation that I get at least one or two decent, you know, if you want to call it height of cliffs in. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think cliffs are beautiful, and if they end up being big, that's great, you know. But uh, how's the, uh, what, what are you using for skis these days? Uh, I'm on my Icelandics. Icelandics? Yeah. Boots? Um, Della boot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love what about it. shoes? You go on trail running, what do you wear? Uh, on. On. Yeah, it's a Swiss brand. Uh -huh. They're really cool shoes. This is like their street like style version. They're just like really minimalistic, a, really lightweight. Shoe. Yeah. yeah, and they're mountain shoes. Just really cool. And they're our title sponsor for the Cirque Series. Oh yeah. Yeah. And they're just like the Arc'teryx uh, trail running shoes. Is how I I look at them. Uh huh. Good grip. Great. It's uh -huh. insane. Yep. Yeah. And I'm still rocking Spider. It's been my outerwear now for like 10 plus years. Spider. Good people over at yeah, Spider. Definitely. Shout out to Brady Collings. Yeah. The man. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, they just picked up um, one of my best friends, Connery Lundin. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's good to hear. He's, uh, he's, he's going to be, I think maybe if you could do in the, he's doing something, I think, shooting in South America I this might. year. I've but, never skied with him, so that'd be really cool. Yeah, he's, he's an ace, former yeah. U.S. Extreme Skiing Champion. Just shout out to Connery. First place. Um, okay. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Resentment yeah. all around. Well, good. We, uh, we appreciate you coming on. And, yeah. Uh, Next up, we have Jax Marias. She's, uh, as discussed, badass runner. I can't relate at all. I can <laughs> relate to some things you do, but thanks a lot, Thanks, buddy. dude. Happy thanks birthday. Thanks for the birthday present. Yeah, man. And we'll be right back.